<laughs> Everybody knows what a gamma ray spectrometer is. Oh, okay. So it's, it's technology that's used to measure the, the spectrum from a, a, a radioactive source of some kind. Uh, for ionizing radiation, we measure the energy distribution that's emitted. So the research that I do, uh, this is a, that does something very special. Uh, I'm going I'm to introduce it by asking a question. How many of you would believe me if I told you that because of the research that I do in my lab, there is right now a gamma ray spectrometer in your parents' bathroom, in their very shower. Oh, some of you. So some of you are familiar with what I do. Okay. What if I up the ante? What if I said that there's a, 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 an imaging gamma ray cam, uh, spectrometer that's in every nuclear facility that the United States does, has no idea exists? How many of you would believe that? None of you. If you oh. If you say so, I would believe you. Oh, then you're, okay, that, you know me. All right, so, so, so that makes it fun. If nobody believes that, then I get to prove that and prove to you that what I do in my lab is impossible. So that's what I like to do. I like to do the impossible. I like to do that for lunch. So <clears throat> here's uh, some of the instrumentation that we have. What I do is uh, uh, up in this one, right up in here, uh, this instrument right here, it does magnetic resonance. Uh, here's a traditional portable gamma ray spectrometer, liquid scintillation. Uh, this instrument over here does thermoluminescence and optically stimulated luminescence. And this system here is a medical physics dosimetry system for measuring entrance dose to uh, uh, patients for uh, medical physics application. I also do air monitoring. I do a lot of impossible things with air monitoring. I love to, to uh, tell you more about it, but uh, there isn't time uh, uh, to go over the detail other than to did, and that's, uh, if you look here, this is uh, an air filter and just measuring the, radi uh, the, the radioactive decay on the filter. What I have up here is in equations into the simple equation, uh, si uh, single exponential decay, so that asymptotically it approaches a constant. That constant is an estimate of the anthropogenic content in the filter. The student was able to do some really cool stuff um, showing that uh, it works, it works great, it works amazing. Um, uh, one of the fun things that, uh, that came out of his research was using kernel density estimators. What that is, is, is when you histogram data, um, you're throwing away some of the information. Uh, and the reason why is because when you've histogrammed the data, you're assuming that the uncertainty in the data is folded into the distribution that you get from the histogram. Uh, but what ends up happening is that in any bin, the data that was in that bin could be in a bin above or two bins below, depending on the uncertainty of that value that you histogram. So you're basically throwing that away and you're assuming that that's getting folded into the distribution. By knowing the uncertainty of each of the measurements that the student did, he was able to effectively model each one of them as a Gaussian. And then you just add up all the Gaussians and you get these cumulative distribution fun or these, uh, these probability density functions over here, the blue and the red. The blue is when you actually had activity on the filter. The red is when you had the, the no activity and you're comparing how well it was able to predict the actual values in Becquerel's, and he was able to show that it's always conservative, 95% confidence level. This method that I showed uh, here does be conservative if you, if you fold in the uncertainties, and that was done by fitting this data with 11 Berkmar part. Now to my impossible claim that I get to prove to everybody in the last two minutes. So what I do is thermoluminescence. It's the same stuff we use for our radiation worker dosimetry badges. In a thermoluminescence badge, uh, we have crystals, you heat, it gives off light that's proportional to dose. If you're doing um, uh, OSL like we do at, at our lab, uh, or in, uh, here at State, uh, you're shining light on it and it gives off, that's what this system does, this is an OSL, this one also does OSL and therm thermoluminescence. But um, if I were then to take a grid, if I had a source here, and I were able to take a grid of material, oh, oh let me back up, so what, the, what I'm able to do as I'm able to take any kind of uh, an inorganic insulator and turn it into a dosimeter. So if I take an array of bricks, then, and I were to sample along these bricks and measure the thermoluminescence that's given off in the quartz from that brick based on inverse square, from the array distribution, I can image the source. So using the, uh, like a, any kind of a, like this wall right here would work, uh, any kind of a, a, an organ inorganic insulator uh, then becomes a gamma camera. So there are now gamma cameras everywhere. Uh, because you have inorganic, basically building materials everywhere. If you then do a core, my, able, my student was able to show you do a core, and then you do slices, and then you measure the dose deposition profile. What that tells you is the mass energy absorption coefficient distribution of the radiation source that it, that, that it was exposed to. And so by measuring that uh, uh, mass energy absorption coefficient, you get the energy. 
Uh, so you can say, is it a single decaying exponential or is it a superposition of multiple? And so unfold what the energy was and therefore the isotopics of the source. And so it just became a gamma spectrometer. So uh, there is, uh, as long as I can claim that these unknown nuclear facilities to the United States have uh, 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 insulating uh, and non, uh, uh, inorganic material in them, they have these imaging gamma ray spectrometers. So hopefully now you believe that the impossible is possible and we do it here at State on a regular basis. So welcome. Um, and then uh, he was able to show for americium using this technique, using a perturbation technique, uh, and then looking at the, res the sum score of the residuals and how they're distributed, showing for americium that there was only a bias of a few KeV with uh, uh, full with the half maximum of the distribution showing an energy resolution of about 6 kV, meaning for americium, the energy resolution of the spectrometry system is about 10%. So with that, I'm done and I've got to go. Oh, and then we're doing some other stuff with detectors. That's just really cool using the Compton Edge, doing a lot of other stuff. If you came to my lab, it, it'd take a couple hours to go through all the fun stuff, but it's just crazy fun. And uh, uh, like I said yesterday, every one of us think we do the best research and I'm no exception. <laughs> So who's next?